Hey everybody, Thomas here. And today, as you see, we are working on charcuterie boards. Charcuterie boards, charcuterie boards, charcuterie boards, whatever you want to call them. Long story short, these are always a big seller for us when we do craft fairs. And this weekend, we actually have a craft fair that we're going to. It's uh, September 30th here in Peshtigo, Wisconsin. There's the Heritage Days or the Historical Day um, that they have here in, in Badger Park. We went to it last year just to see what it was all about and everything. And this year, we're actually going to work on, you know, having a booth and everything. We've got, I think, 38 boards thus far. And we're continuing to make more. I also recently shot some videos where we're doing uh, kind of these unique small little pieces on the sawmill. Those will be some of the, the slabs that I'll have for sale there as well. But one of our big sellers is going to be the charcuterie boards charcuterie shark boards whatever you want to call these things little cutting boards or meat serving boards however they are pronounced all i know is that they do well <laughs> now this is black walnut that i i believe i brought this back from tennessee about a year ago and it had been drying there for probably six months before i brought it here so we got about 18 months of dry time on this wood and Looks like whenever my dad was, because this is something my dad cut, looks like the blade did <laughs> rise up on them. That's probably why this is a junk board, but it's perfect for what I'm actually doing. As you can see, these are ones that I've already cut out this morning. I've just run through the planer, haven't done any sanding yet. We'll be sanding those, and also we're going to do the final coat of oil on them. None of my boards are ever the same. They may be similar, but they're not the same. So if you look here, and I've done videos on this before, all these boards are similar, but there's differences between it. This one right here has a nice, you know, flared edge there. This one right here is similar, but this one's a little bit wider. And then this one right here, because I have this kind of concaved in, well, this is concave or convexed out. So I figured let's let's make some unique stuff, a little bit different. And this one does not have a rolled edge i'll probably make this board work and go either way because look at the grain on this the grain on this board is just gorgeous and that's what i'm doing i'm looking at the grain on the scrap piece of wood now this right here was a board just like this in fact it might have been the other piece of this board here so in total off that one board if i get these five cutting boards there's three there and i've got two drawn out here and as you can see this one's going to be con caved this one will be convexed but i'm utilizing the same lines know if you can see that it's kind of like a, a neat little s curve but yeah maximizing the wood as you can see i've already done a cut out here so you know the handle will be perfectly there now this is in, this board won't be as pretty as say one of these ones up here but i will have some neat you know, darker color wood down here, lighter up here. I usually try to like to get the handle into some kind of like unique portion of the wood. So like on these ones right here, you know, there's there actually there was a knot that I was cutting out there. But like on this one right here, I want it to be a nice, you know, black streak, you know, from darkness to light. That just looks real pretty. I think that's gonna be a beautiful board. Anyways, I try to kind of follow what the grain of the wood has. On this one right here, we're gonna have a really big knot section on it, but also you gotta look at both sides of the wood. If you look on this side, so if you think, halfway up this board is gonna be color, and then the top part will be the sap wood. And on this one right here, the top part will be the heartwood, and the bottom part will be the sap wood. So it'll be a neat transitioning board, similar to kind of like what this one right here looks like. But yeah, I've talked enough. Let's go ahead and get to the actual work. I'm gonna do this via a time lapse because I've done a lot of videos in the past where I show these boards being made. But really, I think y'all are interested in the final product. And again, these are all scrap woods, off cuts and stuff like that, that are just junk. This board right here, I could have sold it. I'd probably would have sold that board as it is for like five bucks. But if I make these two cutting boards out of it, that's say 35 bucks each. So that's 70 bucks out of a $5 board. Not too shabby. All right, so let me go ahead and throw in a time lapse. We'll get to uh, working on this, and then we'll show at the very end of the video all the different boards we have.
All right, folks, so these boards right here, they're essentially the yin and yang of each other. And this is really cool because it was one solid piece and we're maximizing the, the, the yield on this. And there are some differences. As you can see, this one here has kind of a, a different sloped handle. It's got a little more defined, sharper edges. This one right here, it's sloped on this side, but it's got a flat back on that side. But uh, that's pretty awesome. So from one piece of wood, we get two boards. So a piece of wood that I was gonna sell just as quote unquote junk black walnut for five bucks will turn into say, you know, 35 bucks each once these are finished. So let's go ahead and run these now through the planer and see the final product of these. We'll show what these kind of look like all cleaned up and everything. And then we're gonna get into all the other boards at the very end so you can see what we've done over the past two days. It's been uh, a lot of work. A lot of sawdust. Susie's picking a pee over there. So yeah, I'm marking my territory. A lot of sawdust there. Um, but uh, it's well worth it because this right here will eventually pay for the kids' Christmas. And if they're good enough, maybe maybe Santa will bring them something. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> They've been little turds here recently. But they already got a lot of stuff. They got kayaks this year. Tommy has his old four-wheeler here. They got bicycles just the other day for birthdays. All sorts of good stuff. So we shall see. We shall see. And that's just beautiful there. I mean, these boards are gonna look great. So even the back side of the boards is gonna look great. That's pretty cool how it has that strip there. That was just, I don't know, that's actually in the wood. I did not do that, it's just the way it is. But uh, I think these boards are gonna be absolutely gorgeous together. And the fact that they quote unquote interlock, don't drop it. Uh, the fact that they interlock and the, all the grains match up, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. All right, so let's get back to finishing up everything. We're going to have a lot more to do here. Uh, we'll get these things all sanded up, throw the oil on them, and show you the real reveal of these, and then the pile of other things that we're working on.
So that's pretty nice. That's a really nice set right there. Both sides have some nice patterns to them. And I think anyone who gets one or both of these will be very happy. Evelyn's board is turning out great too. Mm -hmm. That's a spalted red oak. That was cut a while ago, but um, it's definitely got some character to it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and throw in a time lapse. We'll go ahead and get all these oiled up here and then do a little uh, video there at the end and everything. And I think I'll also show a little bit of some of the other pieces here that we're making. So hope you enjoy this video. And again, we'll do a recap once we're back at the craft fair tomorrow. I'll do an opening video that shows our setup and everything. And then we'll do kind of uh, how goes it or how, how was it at the end. And then we're going to talk about what sold the best so that we can all learn from, uh, from that from a craft fair. I tell you what folks I am I'm done <laughs> I'm done with this but we still have a few more to go that's only the first coat I don't know how many are here there's a lot there's an absolute ton of these things of all different sizes and shapes we've got some big ones like this right here this piece right here would be a centerpiece on a table for say Thanksgiving or something like that I think it's absolutely beautiful with all the figure and stuff like that then we've got this beautiful maple piece right here and just look at all that figure going down the sides and everything. It's absolutely gorgeous. And you've got these spalted red oak pieces. Again, lots of black walnut pieces. Black walnut's always my best seller, so we made sure to do that. Again, this is the first coat of just mineral oil. Then we're going to go back and put butcher block conditioner on here. The furniture pieces, we might put in some feed and wax. But the butcher block conditioner, what that is, I use Howard's. Howard's the company I use and everything. Uh, it's beeswax, mineral oil, and there might be something else in there, but mostly it's just beeswax and mineral oil, and it gives it a really nice satin finish. If you look at the finish on these right now, they're kind of dull. There's not much to it, but once you add that butcher block conditioner, it's going to give it a really beautiful satin finish. And I will show that on one of these boards here um, because I'm running uh, daylight, and we've got to get these things set up. But before I do that, I did talk about my wood rack. I believe this is all the stuff that we're going to take to the actual, uh, what do you call it, the, the craft fair. We've got a whole lot of stuff. We've got black walnut, we've got maple. I'm probably going to take out some of these bigger maple pieces because I don't want to haul this crap in there. And if someone buys it, I'm going to kind of feel obligated to, to carry it out because that's probably a 50-pound piece right there. And I just, I can't do that. So I'll just limit myself to smaller pieces. Uh, and that's fine because I've got a lot of smaller pieces and a lot of these are like this maple right here. This is a do-it-yourself piece. Some of the boards that we were working over there were maple just like this. I'm like, okay, you can buy a maple board from me that's finished up for, say, 30 bucks, Or you can buy this one right here where you can make five or six boards uh, for, I don't know, I'll sell for 20 bucks or something like that. Who knows? But, uh, yeah. I mean, some of these pieces are like this black walnut piece right here. That's five bucks, 10 bucks for that piece there, 10 bucks for that piece. I mean, I, I've got them priced pretty well. Some red maple crotch section for 15 bucks. So a big thick slab of red maple for 40. There's a big tall one for 30. Anyways, I've, I've priced them out what I believe is a, is a good price or anything. And yeah, 
so let's uh let's show a finished version i think i've got some other videos i gotta throw in here too this has been a long video but whew, three days of doing this and i'm about pooped now i do actually have to go over to that barn way back there and i i had a hornet's nest in the hay that's why i took all the uh, the tarping stuff down. I had a hornet's nest there in the hay, sprayed it down, but I've got some big slabs of cedar out there that I need to get to. There's a slab in the back of that thing. But all right, well, let's get back to it. Okay, folks, I'm absolutely give out. Um, <laughs> it's, I don't know, six o'clock or something like that. We've been working on this for a while, but I have actually oiled up everything with a second coat of the Howard's Butcher Block Conditioner. I can't get this thing to focus. Anyways, I'll uh, I'll put a link in the description below. I use this stuff absolutely on all of my wood products um, and projects and stuff like that. It's great. Now we just had a big gust of wind, so it's hard to show the uh, the satin finish. Plus, I don't have any sunlight, but uh, it looks great. <laughs> now, take a look at this. That is fifty four charcuterie boards in there 54 and there's like you've seen throughout the day there are all different shapes and sizes i think we should be able to meet anybody's and everybody's want needs desires when it comes to charcuterie boards there's a whole lot in there 54 no same no board is the same they're all kind of unique and then i've gone through with my black walnut the cedar the maple the ash the oak and there might be another species in there somewhere um but yeah this pile right here will also go there that's a pretty small little rack but it carries a lot of freaking wood so yeah very happy wish us luck tomorrow i'll uh i'll get this video up sometime tonight and uh i'll let you know how it goes all right please like subscribe we will see you all around and stay tuned for more Thanks.